Right now we're going to talk about the Redskins. Redskins offense shutdown. Day 273. <laughs> I'll tell you what, it certainly was that. On the line is our good friend Trevor Maddich to help us understand with the X's and the O's and all the things that we need to understand about why it went so badly for the Redskins in Dallas last night. Uh, Trevor, I, 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 I don't know what to think. I mean, on one hand, when I look at RG3, I saw a guy who was scrambling a lot better but he wasn't connecting on a lot of his passes. Yeah, but, you know, Brian, when you ask what, what was wrong, what happened, I, I've got to think that it had something to do with Halloween coming. That's the only thing. Oh, really? Yeah, it, ha- it has to be that. There has to be some voodoo thing going on. The, the RG3, you're right, did look better with his legs. He showed more burst. He ran faster. He ran more. He was more effective moving around with his legs. With his arm, he was tentative. He was inaccurate, and he was largely ineffective. And, and that really surprises me, especially coming out of a bye week. Well, and it's not like Dallas has this amazing secondary that, that you know, uh, uh, makes quarterbacks so concerned and afraid that they're going to throw a pick. I mean, they're, they're, they're not that great. So what, what's the problem? Well, you know, I, well, he, I, it's, he's inaccurate right now. I don't know what else the problem could be. Now, I can tell you this, the – the play calling was incredibly unimaginative. Dallas was doing things on defense that the Redskins wanted them to do in response Hold to their fear. I'm going to stop you right there yeah. because that's about the third time in, in your analyses where you have talked about the play calling, which falls, offensive play calling, falls to Kyle Shanahan. Yes. Yeah, and you've been rather critical of the way he has laid out the game plan. Yeah, very critical. And this game more than any other. Because the, the thing that RG3 does when he's right is that his movement makes defenses play differently. It makes them spread out at the line of scrimmage because they fear that he will break contain and get to the outside and then run around out there and cause trouble. Well, that's good for the Redskins because that creates bigger seams inside for Alfred Morris to run through. Well, sure enough, the Cowboys did keep those guys on the edge wider than they normally would have. They feared RG3 running around outside. And that opened up certain places, certain creases in that Dallas front, that if they would have called a play to hit that crease, they could have gouged the Cowboys. And I was waiting for him to call that play. It's just a snake play. All you do is you start the running back one way, then he cuts back the other underneath the contain guy. Uh, I don't want to get too far in the weeds on that, but it was a play that's in the playbook, and it was wide open. And I didn't see him call it a single time. Hmm. That was only one example of, of adjustments that were there to be made because the Cowboys were playing into the Redskins' hands based on what RG3 can do, and those things were not done. It happened in the passing game as well, and that just made it harder for RG3 well, to complete passes. Listen, it's one thing to, to point out that, this, that this, is, this flaw exists, but, I mean, what should be done about it? Well, they need to, I don't know, shake their, shake their heads around, get in a sauna, you know, unstick the brain trust over there. Now, having said that, the Redskins still were in position to win this game. The defense was magnificent. I mean, Tony Romo, who threw for over 500 yards the week before against Denver, threw for 170 yards against the Redskins. They had 213 total yards. The Redskins' defense shut them down. Mm. There were a couple of things that happened that caused the Redskins to lose, but one of those things was that they attempted four field goals made three. They couldn't punch it in when they got near uh, the goal line, that, and that was part of the problem. Uh, Trevor manages, I guess he's uh, WMAL's Redskins analyst, and of course, uh, Trevor, you are on uh, Comcast Sportsnet. You host the Redskins uh, uh, shows there, and uh, listen, you're a regular guy. We've you have you have your political views. We've talked about it off the air, but but when you go on the air, you focus on sports. You do your job and you talk about sports. Last night, a national audience tuned in for a great football game between the Redskins and the Cowboys, and they heard this: Redskins can't possibly honor a heritage or a noble character trait, nor can it possibly be considered a neutral term. It's an insult, a slur, no matter how benign the present-day intent. That, of course, is NBC Sports' Bob Costas. I don't want you to wade into the Redskins question. I want you to talk about from a media perspective. I mean, what do you think of a a journalist like this, uh, whose job it is to talk about sports, jumping in there and creating political hay during his time on the air? 
I see. You don't want to. You don't want me to get myself in trouble talking about the political side. You want me to get in trouble attacking <laughs> Costas himself. Attacking, yeah, to, attack I got, Bob I Costas. I see how you work, Larry. <laughs> yeah, see, you're you're a. <laughs> but, that's but, why you guys are a must listen because you guys stir the fire. But but honestly, I mean, I've heard you say that you know when when it comes to sports, you want to stick to sports. Right, and the, Bob Costas over the years has has weighed into the political fray when sports and politics has. Uh, over, have overlapped. I mean, he's done that with gun control. He's done that with other things. And, uh, and, and I'm okay with that. I mean, if anybody's earned the right to give his opinion on that, it's cost us. This particular opinion, uh, I don't feel as strongly about it as he does when he talks about it being a slur, no matter how you call it. You know, one, one poll that I saw reported in the media showed that 90% of Native Americans are not offended by it. I guess that means 10% either are offended or they're not sure. But, but either way, I, I don't know that that's a consensus but again, where we all agree that it's a slur today. And, yeah, he, and the meaning of words changes, by the way. He said it as if it's not his opinion, it's just stated fact. I mean, this can't be good for the sport. Well, I, I, I disagree with what he said, but a lot of people do agree with him. And, and again, I respect Bob Costas' right to take that risk as a, as a sports broadcaster and weigh into that the way that he did. But, you know, when it comes down to it, uh, this is, it's, it's a tough thing because the, the truth of it is, my understanding of the name Redskin is that it was absolutely a slur back in the day, meaning the 1800s. You know, it, it was a slur. But the meaning of words change over time. I yeah. mean, fat used to mean you're fat. You know, now it can mean a whole lot, lot of things. You know, can I, I just say, elite long snapper Trevor Maddich, he never had to worry about fancy footwork or running a pattern or you know staying in bounds. Not as enough, but but boy, oh boy, did we see some fancy. Wow, footwork I just on saw some. One. I mean, man, I, you know, you should be on Dancing with the Stars with foot like footwork like that. Yeah, well, yeah. The thing is, Bob Costas is a lot smaller than me, but he can still beat me up. <laughs> wow, I would like to, I would yeah. pay good money to see that, Trevor Maddich. <laughs> Trevor, I'm sorry, we didn't mean to get you too far afield, but uh, look, I, we're you know, after I'm some, not sorry. No, at some you point, apologize for yourself, Wilson. It's just, not me. It's, it's just hard to talk about the Redskins. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Trevor, we'll talk to you Friday. Okay, we'll see you guys Thanks, later. Man.